too far away for a fair throw, Hanson. Come a little closer, huh? Just a little closer. You wouldn't want to disappoint your friends. They all came here to see blood. Why don't you bring them in a little closer? Close, so they can see it, huh? Please, Hanson. Five steps. Two steps. One, Hanson. Just one step. Just close enough so you can get a fair chance with that meat hook. How about it, Hanson? Somebody here had a hand in it, are you? No, I don't think you'd have the guts. I don't think you've got the guts right now to admit that this fellow McNeil had me burned down. Now, take it easy, Brady. Take it easy, Matt. What are you talking about? Take it easy. Didn't we agree to stick together? Well, I stuck. Whose house got burned down? Mine. Whose barn went up in smoke? Mine. Whose livestock burned up? Mine. No, I'm taking what I got and clearing out. But I thought we all had a clear title here. Then this fellow McNeil stepped in, took over half the valley. Well, I don't know what you're arguing about. I haven't got anything to claim. Well, this is a matter that the courts are going to have to decide. And I say we hold the land any way we have to. I don't know about you, but I have over a thousand rounds of ammunition. And I promise you this. The first McNeil man that steps on my land stays there. Permanent. Now, just a minute, gentlemen, please. If McNeil wants to fight us with the law, we'll use the law, too. If he comes at us with guns, we'll defend ourselves. Make no mistake about that. But the important thing is, are we still going to stick together? Johnson, how about you? I just don't know, Mr. Holmes. I'd sure hate to go up against the law. That is, if McNeil's title is really good. What do you say, John? I got four kids, Matt. And, well, I have to think it over. Mr. Hanson, what do you say? When everybody wants to stick together, I stick with them. But when nobody don't want to stick together, I stick alone by myself. Un momento, Senor Hanson. Not all by yourself. I am your friend. I stick too in my family. Con permiso. Con permiso. That's quite a layout. For him? Can pack the ice all the way from the Gulf. Mm, that's Please. Nice. Oh, he ain't gonna miss just one of these, is he now? Please, Mr. Baxter. You know how Mr. McNeil is. All right, Thorny. Anything for you. Thank you. 
Now, you just get me some whiskey, will you? I'm coming right up, Mr. Baxter. Yeah. Drink hearty. I will. Tony! Yes, Mr. Baxter. Johnny Crail come in yet? Yeah, he just got in. He's up there now. like this calls for a toast. Will you join us, Johnny? Anything calls for a toast. Well, have you any particular toast in mind, Johnny? I do. Let's straight to Johnny and the success of his mission. <laughs> Very good. Of course, you realize, Johnny, that conditions have changed a great deal since you and I last worked together, hmm? <laughs> I can see that. You've got drapes on the doorway and lobster on the table. And 75 pounds more in your belly. And a new secretary. Private. <laughs> your wit is as outdated as your profession, Johnny. We've moved into a new era. <laughs> Killing on the scale to which you're accustomed to isn't fashionable anymore. <laughs> as long as there are men like you, there'll be plenty of work for men like me. Especially me. This is not Waco, and it's not 20 years ago, Johnny. I'm in business here, on this hotel. I hold title to 120 sections of land in this area. Some of it is occupied by squatters who've lived here 10 or 15, even 20 years. I try to get them to leave as peaceably as possible. I've even paid some of them to get out. <laughs> you pay them, huh? You must be pretty desperate. No, no. No, in this instance, I'm quite willing to pay them. However, some of them have proved extremely reluctant to follow my suggestions, huh? <laughs> Time presses. I've run out of means of persuasion. So you thought of old Johnny Crail? <laughs> Precisely. I won all land grants legally signed over to me within a week. For this, we need an example. Just one, Mark. You have no taste for a massacre. Just what business are we in? <laughs> My business. You mean it will be when you get your example. You'll find the usual envelope on the bureau in your room, Johnny. Sheriff in this town? Well, actually, there isn't. But I have one. The town likes him, and I pay him. So there'll be no trouble from there. Well, that takes care of everything but the example. What's his name? Oh, Johnny. <laughs> you know, I never, never discuss examples when there are three people in the room. I'll talk to you later. You mean you don't even trust your own secretary? <laughs> I don't even trust you, Johnny. Hey, you're becoming quite the dandy, aren't you, Johnny? Wearing two guns instead of one, and gloves. <laughs> I never saw you wear gloves before, Johnny. Tell me, did you eat them? Got a rash on the back of my hand. Doctor gave me some salve and told me to keep them covered up. Couldn't be the rash is permanent, could it, Johnny? <laughs> what are you trying to say, McNeil? No, nothing, nothing. I just wondered if you'd change in any other ways, too. Tell me, you still a fast draw? Faster, if anything. Show me, Johnny. Let me see you draw. Draw, Johnny. Draw. <laughs> you were always a right-handed gun. What happened, Johnny? This is the hardest fist in Texas. It's a solid steel. Somebody blew the old one off, and I've been shooting left-handed ever since. And I use the right to slug guys who ask too many questions. Got any objections, McNeil? <laughs> no, no, none at all. No, I like uh, skill like that. But I wouldn't spread it around if I were you, Johnny. Some people might take advantage of a cripple. If I've got any letters to write, you mind if I borrow your secretary, McNeil? <laughs> I keep her occupied 24 hours a day. Yeah, huh? Make sure he pays you overtime, ma'am. No 
Don't pay any attention to what he says. He does what I tell him to do. It seems so, so strange. I don't think I've ever met anyone like him before. That's because you've never seen death walking around in the shape of a man before. That's right. Death. It's in his blood. Are you still in bed? Sure. Can you think of a nicer place to be? Come on, Johnny. Sit down. Somebody ever opened up your head to see what was inside? He'd find only one thing. Why don't you get dressed? Did you see him? Yeah, I saw him. We may stick around this town a long time. McNeil's got something pretty good going. Let me go into business with him. What? What kind of business? I don't know yet. My retainer. It's not that kind of business again, is it? What else? Well, not again, Johnny. Your big days are all over. One man with a gun just can't make it anymore. We're in Texas now. They've got the state police, the rangers. You just can't walk into a town and walk out of it the way you used to. Oh, Johnny, please. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of this town. Let's go away. Get up and get back into bed. Johnny, please, you've got to talk to me once in a while. Oh, Johnny, if you'd only let me help. If you'd only listen, if you'd only let me... You where you belong right now. Señor Hansen, amigo, mira lo que hay, parece un milagro. Look, amigo, I'm digging in the well, and this comes from the walls. Feel it. It's oil. The ground, she's filled with oil. It makes us rich, all of us. Now I know why Mr. McNeil comes to town. He don't want our land, he want our oil. It comes close to the top of the ground. I get you a bucket full every four or five minutes. We have to tell everybody about it. We have to stop Mr. Brady before he sells out. We have to stop everybody. I go to Mr. Holmes. Bet you go to Mr. Brady and Mr. Johnson. Amigo. How rich you be from oil, huh? Just so good, like gold. Papa, papa! Papa, papa! Somebody coming, Papa! Who is coming? Dime, que pasa? The man who came to town yesterday. The Mr. McNeil. The one Mr. Holmes told us about. If he come here, he come to see me, not you. So you two go home. It is better we should be together, amigo. This man carries two guns. Then we have two reasons for you to go home, not one. Go. But what are friends for? It's too late. It's better if you go into the shed. Pepe, Pepe, come in. Pepe, ask what he says. Anda. Come. Anda. Inside, inside, inside. And I stand at the side of my friend. A man will talk more when he's alone with another man than when he's with you. We need to learn from this man. You are a good friend. Stay in the shed and listen. Hansen? Ja, Svan Hansen. You read English, don't you? Maybe better than you read Swedish. Good. Read this. Then sign it. I don't know you. I don't want your paper. Well, I guess that means you and I are going to have a little trouble. Oh? Because if you don't sign that paper, I'm going to have to kill you. Get off my land. Get off my land. Get off my land. 
Get off my... Get off my... How can we? He was our friend. No, Ros. One cannot stay out of things when a friend has been killed. We must tell what we saw. Tell what we saw? Senor Brady's house has been burned down. Senor Anson is killed. What happens next, we do not know. At least I do know. The friend is dead and cannot be helped. This child that comes is alive and can be helped. You will say nothing about what you have seen. You will tell no one. This child will be born in peace. In peace, Amara Mi. City. Just another name for God's own free country. When do you get out of just sitting around here all day playing cards? Gives me something to think about. You're losing your nerve, Johnny. I can tell. Something's eating at you. You're crazy. You've already done the job you came to do. It isn't safe to stay around here like this. Johnny, I want you to get out of this state. Deal.
What'll it be, mister? Uh, they tell me I can get a wagon here with a horse. Oh. How long will you be holding it? How long? Oh, oh, I don't know. I used to be going out to the Hanson farm. The Hanson farm? Yeah. What would you be doing out there? Oh, I'm going to see my father, Sven Hanson. Your father? Yeah. Oh, I, I think maybe you'd better go see the sheriff, mister. The sheriff? Yeah. The sheriff Stoner across the street. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just think you'd better, that's all. He... Is he in trouble? He's dead. Buy a drink. No. No. Did you know him? Not very well. Not very long. You did know him. Yeah. How did he die? Come on, sit down. I'll tell you about it. This is Molly. My name's Johnny Crail. My name is George Hanson. This is Crail. Sit down. I'd like to know, how did he die? Somebody shot him. Why would anyone shoot a man like my father? Maybe he had a disagreement with him. Maybe your father had something the other man wanted. When did this happen? Mm, let me see, Tuesday, three days ago. Nobody seems to know how it happened. They just found him shot in the head. Sheriff had an inquest, but uh, no witnesses. What is this for a country where, where a man is killed and nobody knows anything, nobody does anything? It's the kind of country it is. Things like that happen around here all the time. Isn't that true, Molly? Sure, all the time. Well, did, did they bury him? Did, did anybody bother to give him a funeral? That's one thing you can always be sure of here. I have not seen him since, since 19 years ago. We were buying the farm together. After every voyage, I would send him a few dollars. All these years, I dream of, of leaving the sea and having a home. Now, I don't know. Thank you, sir, very much. Goodbye, ma'am. Where are you going? Oh, I must see the sheriff. That's a very good idea. I'd lodge a strong complaint if I were you. You can leave it there, it'll be safe. Thank you. Aren't you glad we stayed around? That's more business. He doesn't look too easy to me. Nothing looks easy to you. You know why? It's because you're so easy. Bill. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, my name is George Hanson. I'm the son of Swen Hanson. Come on, Willie. You better get back in there. 
Willie's here most of the time. Someone told you about your father? Yes. I didn't know Hanson had any relatives. Who killed him? We don't know. There weren't any witnesses. He was just found lying in the yard. Dead. Well, isn't it your job to find out who killed him? Well, yes, of course. Well, then find out. Now, just a minute. We had an inquest and there weren't any witnesses. If the killer is still in this part of the country, we'll find him. If not, he's probably left the state and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, how far is it to my father's place? Are you, uh, figuring on going out there? Well, of course. It belongs to me now. Well, uh, I wouldn't be too sure about that if I were you, young fellow. The law here may be different than where you come from. Well, I have a letter from my father. It says here that... It says the place is mine. It's in Swedish. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think a letter like that will hold up in a court of law. Oh? Well, it also says there is a will. A will filed in the court of records in the city of Austin. It says the place belongs to me. The land didn't belong to him, so it can't belong to you. I know how you feel. You're a stranger here. Well, I don't want you to get into any trouble. Trouble? Well, how can I get in trouble claiming what is mine? Ha ha! I know you're afraid I will be killed. And if I'm killed, you will have to find out who did it. That is your job, eh? Now, listen. No foreigner is going to come in here and tell me how to run my job. You understand that? Yeah. I understand. Where are you staying? Uh, the hotel? No. No, I am staying in my own room. In my own house, on my own land. And nobody better try to move me. I'm mighty sorry to have to tell you this. But that land is under no trespass order from the court. You put one foot on that property and I'll have to put you in jail. The law says this too? That's right. Of course, if the law made a mistake, you have a right to hire an attorney. He'll see to it that you get justice. You're not in some foreign country now where a man has no rights at all. You've got to understand that. You've got a right to justice. And you'll get it. Yeah. I think I do begin to understand. All right, I will stay in the hotel. But I understand justice, too. I think I will get it. So I suppose this will is registered in Austin. The suite staying here in the hotel. Looks to me like he's just thick-headed enough to want to start some trouble. Have you had legal training, Sheriff? No, sir. Well, then don't give me legal advice. What are you sweating like that for? Somebody frightened you? Well, no, sir, Mr. McNeil, but... Well, you've got to understand my position in this matter. It's a very touchy situation. I could get caught in the middle. Well, I can't afford that. And I can't afford you unless you stop this uh, public shivering. Now get out of here, I'm busy. Swedes in this country, they keep popping up like jackrabbits. This one's younger, McNeil, and smarter. I want to see him, Johnny. Sure. to see you. Why? Business. You work for him? In a way. Then you knew about my father's land when you talked to me? Yeah, I'm afraid I did. My name is Ed McNeil. This is my secretary, Mona Stacy. 
I want to tell you how personally saddened I was by your father's death. Uh, sit down, won't you? And I've posted a $500 reward for any information leading to an arrest. Oh, I do not think you will have to pay that reward, Mr. McNeil. I do not think there is going to be any arrest. <laughs> what are you drinking? Nothing, thank you. Crail tells me that you've been asking about your father's farm. I presume you naturally thought you had an interest in the place. That's why you came here, isn't it? Do I have to give you reasons for what I do? Oh, no, of course not. But you did think you were going to inherit the place, am I correct? I have inherited it. <laughs> Let's get the facts straight, hmm? I hold prior right by land grant to all of this property. Now, about 20 years ago, when this country was first settled, the squatters moved in. Some of them failed, sold their farms, and went on. Now, your father was unfortunate enough to buy one of those places, which they had no right to sell. Well, I'm a man who understands the, uh, well, the position these poor people find themselves in. So, in, instead of evicting them, I've been paying them to get off my property. <laughs> Would you say that's being about as fair as a man can be? Oh. If what you say is true, then, then what you are doing is fair, yes. <laughs> and since what I'm saying is true, I have made out a release for you. All you have to do is sign it, and I will have $300 placed to your order. I have $300. I also have a farm. Have you seen that land? It's not worth $300. It isn't worth two. Well, then I know I could not allow you to pay me for it. I could not accept more for a thing than it is worth. Young man, you're a farmer. You're making a fresh start in a new land. Let me ask you something. Are your papers in order? Well, I, I think if they are not in order, the proper authorities will know about it soon enough. And I think even if they are in order, they will also know. Who gives you that idea? You were going to tell them about all this that is going on, are you not? And I withdraw my offer. Don't come back and tell me you change your mind, because I promise you I won't change mine. I don't think we will have any trouble about that, Mr. McNeil. Well, he looks like he's my problem now. Uh, not in the way you think, Johnny. Another killing at this moment might prove most inopportune. Uh, I want him on the train tonight. I don't care how you get him there, just so long as he stays alive. Neil, I never like to do half a job when a whole job's easier. But I'm always willing to make an exception for a partner. Because that's what I think we're going to be. spent 30 years at sea, most of them in whale ships. He must have kept this as a souvenir. Uh, if a man knows how to throw one of these, he can do a lot of damage. Gonna kill him, man? Better to look at the guys. 
We heard the shot, and when Pep and I got there, he was stuck in the ground as though he had tried to throw it. That is all we know. I brought it home to remember him by. Pull out, Pepe. Si. Uh, Rosa, try el vino y las copas, por favor. Would you care for a glass of wine? Yes, I would. Have you killed any whales in our Hampton? <laughs> yes, I have killed many whales. Sure, so you do it. I was talking to him, Peppy. Girls don't know anything about whales. Oh, now, wait a minute, Peppy. Girls know something about almost everything. Perhaps, perhaps even more than you and I, huh? Now, you watch. You must hold it this way, you see? With this, with this, you do not kill a whale. This is just to, to hook onto him. Then you kill him with a lance. Hola, papa. Con permiso. Excuse me. Gente con su madre. Buenas tardes, señores. Is your name Jose Morada? Si, señor. Yes. We've got a message for you, Jose. Can you guess what it is? No, senor. You're leaving town, Jose, by Sunday. By Sunday? Oh, no, senor, that is not possible. You see, we have the problem of... Can't you try to make it possible? Try it as a favor to me, amigo? No, senor, of course I will try. I do not like to make these appointments for you, but there is the question of my wife. You see, any day now she... Any day now, your wife could be a widow, Jose. Why do you keep thinking of yourself? Why don't you try to do something for me, Jose? What are you doing here, Hanson? Visiting a friend. What are you doing? I'm trying to help a friend. Sunday, Jose. Remember, Sunday. But my wife is going to have a baby any day now. Maybe even today. Congratulations. Sunday. Gracias, señor. Rosa. I know, I know what he said. You have come to see us on a sad day, señor Hanson. I am sorry. How long have you lived here? Lived here? My people have always lived here. How many hundreds of years? Quien sabe, señor? A long, long time. Can you tell me why, Mr. Murata? Why is it that, that McNeil wants all this land? No, senor. If we only knew that, we might have the answer to our own problem. I have looked at my father's place. I have seen your land. A man can raise a crop here, but, but he would never get rich. And yet one man wants it all. Why? This is a mystery, amigo. I, I know nothing. And the other ranchers? Nobody knows nothing. Somebody somewhere must know why. I am going to find that man. Uh, Mr. Holmes. That's right. My name is Hanson, George Hanson. I think you knew my father. Oh, yes, I knew your father. He was a fine man. Well, thank you. Mr. Holmes, I have been talking to people here and there about, about what happened to him, about what's happening to us all, and it seems that, well, that you are the man who is trying to hold these people together, no? Trying, yeah, but that's all. It can't be done. People are just like any other kind of animal. When they get scared, they scatter, including myself. Excuse me, I'm busy. understand that if only the men would stick together, why then, then maybe we would have a chance. Chance at what? The trouble with the people around here is all they do is talk. I've had enough talk. I'd a sight rather fight all alone than count on other people helping me. By well, then it'll be too late. I'll take my chances. You feel the same way, Mr. Johnson? Well, it's like I say, not as much up to me as my wife. I can't just think of myself.
I will have whiskey. Yes, sir. Ma'am, would you have a drink with me? Well, I'll be glad to. I didn't know you were still here. Oh, yes, I am still here. Is there some reason I should not be? Well, I guess not. It's a funny town, that's all. People disappear or get shot. or get run out almost every day. Let's drink to both of us getting out of here just as quick as the good Lord will let us. Oh, no, no, I... I would rather drink to you because I am not getting out of this town. Not ever. Skull. Cool. Skull. Cool. You do not like it here, do you? I hate it. Why don't you get out? You know why as well as I do. Grail? Grail. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have another one. All right, I will. Tell me a thing. What kind of work does he do? <laughs> why is it that every time a man gives a girl too fast drinks, he thinks she'll tell him everything she knows? Oh, I am sorry. I guess that is what I was hoping for. Poor. I could do this all afternoon and never even give you the time of day. Oh. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, but, but not if we were drinking Akavit. Well, we're not drinking uh, whatever it is. We're drinking whiskey. And no matter how much I drink, I'll tell you only one thing. Stay away from him. Why? He's mean. He killed my father, didn't he? <laughs> naughty, naughty. Try again. Why do you stay with a man like this? I stay with him because I'm what I am. I stay with him because no other man would have me. I stay with him because as low as I am, I can turn around and see him and remember there's somebody lower. Look at me. Can't you see what's written here? Can't you see a thousand days and a thousand nights that never were love and never could be and never can be? Molly. Molly, you listen to me. I have been all over the world. I have known all kinds of men, all kinds of women. But I never knew one who could not change if he wanted to. Oh, that's big talk. I am telling you the truth. The truth about what? I just said the truth. That is not so difficult to understand. You're standing in my place. Nice music, huh? You like our music here? I ask you a question. You like our music? Hey, Kino. What do you think of a fellow don't like our music? You know, the way I got it figured, a fellow shouldn't have to stay anywhere where we don't like the music. Right, Kino? Fellow shouldn't stay anywhere where he don't like the music. How do you like this for service? Got yourself all set to put on the train, even got your ticket right out of state. You better take it back to my room. You ain't got no room no more. Is that right, Johnny? That's right. Hey, you know what I better do? I better count the towels, see how many he's trying to get off with. Where'd you get that, sweet?
Hey, Molly, try this on. If you like it, I might buy it for you. Johnny, why don't you make him stop it? Sure. Put it back. How much you take for it? Just put it back. I don't see anything so special about this. Looks just like any little old piece of merchandise to me. If it's mine, I'd be glad to sell it, wouldn't you, boy? Sure would. I'd give it away. Come on, sweet, you can tell me. Is there something special about it? It belonged to my mother. One day it will belong to my wife. Well, in that case, we might as well just split it up between them right here, hadn't we? Half and half. Yeah. Stop them and they'll kill them. Sure. When you're through with them, put them on the train. Amigo, ¿qué pasó? ¿Qué did they do to you? Uh, at the hotel last night. A fight? Yeah. Then, then why do you come from that way? They, they put me on a train. The first time it, it slowed down, I rolled off. Pobre. Vamos. Let me fix you up. You stay here with us, amigo. Things clear up pretty soon, no? No, I shall be getting back into town. You going to fight some more? Silencio. No son cosas de niño. Vete para allá. Andale, tú también. No, papi. I am not exactly anxious to fight some more. But also, I'm not anxious to lose my farm. This farm is not possible to be safe, senor. Pretty soon we lose them. All of us. You know something, Marada? There is only one reason why we must lose our farms. There's only one reason why my father was killed. You know what that reason is? No, senor. It is because of fear. It is because people are afraid. We could turn this valley inside out if only people were not afraid. Which fear do you speak of, senor? Of being afraid to talk. To talk about what, senor, answer? Well, Mrs. Morata. Thank you. I cannot help thinking that somebody knows why my father was killed and will not tell. I also cannot help thinking that they know who killed him and also will not tell that. Senor Hansen, you have been our friend. Your papa was also our friend. But we, we have been bad friends. This is my fault. So I will tell it to you myself. Jose, he wished to say it all the time. There is oil in this place. Oil? It leaks down the side of my new well. I tell this thing to your papa. Then the one with the black gloves rides up and shoots him. All your papa has is the harpoon. We see this, Pepe and I. We see it and I'm afraid to tell. I was afraid. I was afraid for the baby. 
So we have spoiled our honor for this. Ah, oh, Mrs. Morata, that does not matter. The only thing that matters is that you do tell now. Si, senor. You know, Morata, I think something. I think that when the people know there is oil in the valley, then they will fight. Rosa. Luz, ayuda tu madre. Andale. Rosa. Tú quédate aquí. Can I be of any help? Yo creo que no. Then I must be getting back. From Rather. Is it all right if I tell the sheriff this other thing? About my father? Si, senor. You tell them Jose Mirada is no longer afraid. I will. Too? No, Pepe. This moment, your mama does not love us. She loves only the baby. I... Mama! <sighs> mama! I... Are you sure you can get the preacher to open the church up now? Sure he will. You just leave it to me. What am I the deacon for if I can't call a special meeting to let the town know it's floating on oil? How soon? Oh, we ought to get them ready by 8 o'clock. I'll have them start ringing the bell just as soon as I can get a man over there. All right, now I will go and call Barnaby and Yancey. Oh, if Mirada's going to identify the killer, maybe he shouldn't ride into town alone. Well, after I'm finished with the others, I will stop by and take him with me. Anything else? Can't think of anything. I'll be out here in five minutes myself. Good luck. Martha? Martha? Buenos dias, senor Merrada. Buenos dias, senor. The little baby, she is born yet, amigo Merrada. The little brown baby. Si, si, senor. That is to say, con su permiso, it is about to be. The, the pains are coming. My daughter, she's taking care of. Maybe any minute now, senor. Quien sabe? Quien sabe. I wish the little one has eyes as sharp as his father. I do not think I understand, senor. Sometimes, this early in the morning, English gives me much trouble. Not as much trouble as you're planning to give me, Marotta. Trouble? You're going to be a witness against me, aren't you? What's the matter, Marotta? Can't you talk? <laughs> you just told Mr. Hanson you will talk, and all of a sudden, you can't talk. Or can you, Marotta? Senor, would you be so good as to listen one moment what I want to say? What do you want to say? Speak up, Marada. Don't be afraid. Please, do not kill me. Marada, whatever gave you such an idea? Was it because you think you saw me kill somebody else? Get down, Marotta. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees and swear by the sun born child that you'll never testify against me. Get down. 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 Get down, Marotta. Because you must kill me. If I swear, you will kill me. If I beg, you will kill me. If I stand as a man, still you will kill me. Well, I stand as a man.
Well, good morning, Johnny. I'm very glad to see you. Pardon me a moment. I'm just uh, paying these gentlemen off. It appears that we've come upon new times in Perry City. <laughs> Violence is passé. You hope. Kino. Weed and Baxter. Now, to repeat our agreement, just so there shan't be any misunderstandings, it is this. That you are to leave Perry City within the hour. That you're not to return to it so long as I shall be a resident. Am I correct? We understand that. Agreed. <laughs> well, gentlemen. Just so we should not prolong the unhappy moment of farewell, hmm? <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. Any time, Mr. Neal. See you, Johnny. Thanks a lot. Well, Johnny, we seem to have stirred up quite a little excitement, hmm? A little. Where's your secretary? <laughs> Sent her to Dallas last night. Same train you put Hanson on. You know, Johnny, I'm somewhat disappointed by your uh, disposition of Hanson. My passenger got to Dallas. <laughs> why didn't yours, huh? <laughs> Tell me, why didn't you say that uh, there was a witness around when you killed the old man? That was a mistake, Johnny. When they hang men for such carelessness. They won't hang me. The witness is dead. Now, Baxter tells me that the uh, good citizens of this community are for gathering in the local church. Don't you think the death of that Mexican might somewhat inflame them against you? And you? <laughs> oh, I think not, Johnny. You know, there are two ways to skin any cat. The first way having failed, I'll now put the second into effect. <laughs> in a short time, they'll hail me as their savior. I'll be the most popular man in the valley. <laughs> and the richest, too. Ah, oh, but not you, Johnny. Oh, no. No, I fear that before the morning's out, we'll hear the sound of marching feet outside this hotel. They'll be marching for you. Here's your money, Johnny. Go on, Johnny. Run. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Something I want to talk to you about, Neil. Something I saw this morning. Something rather remarkable. Sit down, McNeil. Sit down, McNeil. I think this may interest you. What I saw this morning was really remarkable. Really remarkable. I saw a man who wasn't afraid to die. Mr. McNeil! Mr. McNeil! Mr. McNeil!
saw something this morning I've never seen before in my Johnny, life. Johnny, you've told me that over and over again. Can I get up now? No. I'm trying to tell you something. Why don't you listen to me? Why don't you try to understand? I saw a man this morning that wasn't afraid to die. Do you know what this means? A man who wasn't afraid to die. Did he die? Murata. There's a lot of people who aren't afraid to die, Johnny. No. No, that's not true. Every man I ever held a gun on was sweating with fear. Every single one. Except this one man, even McNeil. But not this man. Do you mind if I get up now, Johnny? Sure, get up. Get up, anything you want. Bye, Johnny. You see, Johnny? It doesn't work. It just doesn't work anymore. Open with prayer, we are not here today for religious services. We are of many faiths and of one hope. The church edifice has been thrown open that we may freely discuss a most unusual situation upon which our futures and the futures of our children depend. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could I say something? I came here because... because I don't think you know something, and I think you ought to know it. Mr. Murata was killed this morning in front of his own house. Mr. McNeil was killed in his hotel room. The killer... the killer is still at the hotel. And a man named George Hansen is walking down the street with nothing but a whale harpoon to fight with. I didn't mean to interrupt a church service or, or anything like that. I just thought you, you'd like to know. I thought you might want to help. I don't know about the rest of you, but... I'm going down that street. What about the oil? The oil be hanged.
too far for a fast throw, Hanson. Come a little closer, huh? Come on, Hanson. All of you, come closer. You wouldn't want to disappoint your friends, Hanson. They all came here to see blood. Why don't you bring them a little closer? Close so they can see it, huh? Please, Hanson. Five steps. Just five steps, Hanson. Two steps. Two. One, Hanson. Just one step, just close enough so you can get a fair chance with that meat hook. How about it, Hanson? <laughs> 